Hi, I'm Simon Kenton, and this is my review of Touch Trilogy by Garrett Robinson. First, a disclaimer. Garrett Robinson is my editor, and we're online friends. While I try to remain as impartial as possible, I always like to point that out before my reviews. Touch Trilogy is about Sally, a woman who has the power to read minds by touching people. She thinks of this as a curse, and has retreated from the world to avoid coming into contact with anyone. The book is divided into three parts, each of which is a short novella. Overall, I very much enjoyed the first two parts, but the third part just didn't work for me. I've read almost everything Garrett has written at this stage. It'd be fair to say that I'm a big fan of his work. His writing is always engaging and his characters are always believable. If he has a weak side, in my opinion, it's plotting and planning. Currently, Garrett is doing vlog -a novel videos where he shows his writing process, and it seems that he's mostly a pantser. For anyone that isn't familiar with the term, there are two types of writers. Some people plan every little detail of what's going to happen in a book. They're called plotters. Other people just start writing. They're called pantsers. The weakness of plotters is that they may have stories that seem by the numbers or have dull characters. Pantsers, meanwhile, may have weak endings or dull parts in their books as they try to find the story. Plotters tend to be consistent, but they may not hit the heights of pantsers. Pantsers, meanwhile, may have amazing plot twists and rich characters, but every book might not be a home run. In my opinion, this is what happened with Touch Trilogy. The first two parts deal with Sally's struggle to come to terms with her powers while dealing with outside threats. The third part, however, has a new threat that seems to come out of nowhere, along with a road trip that I had trouble caring about. In the first two parts, Sally struggles with her powers, slowly coming to terms with them and gaining a little control. In the third part, however, Sally essentially developed superpowers, which took all of the suspense out of the story. The Touch Trilogy had its moments. The first two parts had me enthralled, but when I started reading the third part, I was bored very quickly and I couldn't figure out why. In the first two parts, the story hinted at a developing friendship between Sally and a detective called Liv. The story seemed to be heading in the direction of Sally helping Liv solve crimes. That didn't happen in the third part. It's alright to work against expectations, but you need to show the readers something more interesting, or they'll quickly get frustrated and bored. The other thing that the third part didn't have was an arc. Sally comes a long way in the first two parts, from being an incredibly shy person to being somewhat normal. In the third part, she was left with nowhere to go, really. I had the same problem with Wormspire, which I didn't finish. Without an arc for the characters, the story can become a little bland. Overall, I liked the first two parts of the story, but the third put a damper on it for me. I give Touch Trilogy two stars out of five, which is three stars out of five on Amazon, meaning that it was okay.